something that that you are able that you're dealing with and rabbi yochanan answered he says neither they nor their reward are welcome to me so rabbi hanina said give me your hand and rabbi yochanan reached up his hand and rabbi hanina raised him the text asks why could not rabbi yochanan raise himself and he and the text answered the prisoner cannot free himself from jail so the idea here is that without Rabbi Hanina reaching out to Rabbi Yochanan, he could not have found any sort of, of healing from his, from his suffering, that he needed another person to do this reaching out in order for him to um, be able to move out of his place. Uh, I've learned that one of the most challenging parts of mental illness is the temporary or ongoing ability to reach out for help. Uh, this act of reaching out means having to admit that something is wrong. It means having to admit that the struggle that one is trying to hide um, might be impossible for someone else to hold, or that there is nothing another person can do for them. In moments like this, we pray for the ability to pray. We might take a breath and just hold out our hand. I want to conclude my remarks this morning with a poem by Rabbi Lawrence Kushner, who's actually in the Bay Area. He wrote, every each lifetime is the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. For some, there are more pieces. For others, the puzzle is more difficult to assemble. Some seem to be born with a nearly completed puzzle. And so it goes. Souls trying this way and that, trying to assemble the myriad parts. But know this, no one has within themselves all the pieces to his or her puzzle. Like before the, like before the days when they used to sell jigsaw puzzles in cellophane, ensuring that all of the pieces were there. Everyone carries within, with them at least one puzzle at least one and probably many pieces to someone else's puzzle. Sometimes they know it and sometimes they don't. And when you present your piece, which is worthless to you, to another, whether you know it or not, whether they know it or not, you are a messenger from the most high. So my prayer for all of us on this day of uh, promoting mental health and, and wellness is that we can each be someone that someone else can reach out to, that we can also reach out in moments of our darkness and that as a wider community, San Mateo County, that we can continue to offer resources and support for those who are in need. Amen. Amen. I see the hearts and claps. Yeah, free for you to access all your reactions. <laughs> there he went talks. Thank you for that, Rabbi Delson. We so appreciate you for being with us, uh, given the fact that the high holy days are happening. I know you've been very busy, so we thank you for for always gracing us with your presence. And, and you want reminded me, uh, you know, in terms of with prayer and reflection and forgiveness. I want to ask the committee that they forgive me, charge it to my head and not my heart. So uh, we've, this event has not been possible without, you know, um, it says Reverend William, who we know as Bill and Gloria, and even our intern now in spiritual Spiritualities, Tim Lauren has helped out, my co-chair Pam, Claudia, Maria, thank you all. And also, of course, Michelle, um, for all that you all have done. We've had a few people that sent us emails, such as our own uh, Candace and, and Ellen who are not able to be with us today. Uh, so we wanna thank all those that have been part of the committee that helped this great event. And even our um, spiritual initiative committee members who have allowed us to engrave some awesome ideas during our uh, normal uh, uh, meetings, which is actually the second Tuesday. So this would normally be our regular meeting day. And so we thank all of them for being in attendance as well and for all the support that you have done um, with helping this day possible. So thank you. All right. Um, so thank you, uh, Rabbi uh, Dawson, for that. Uh, so next up, uh, uh, we want to uh, introduce to some and 
others already know. We have the pleasure of having our uh, interim director here for Behavioral Health and Recovery Service, um, who is going to be able to uh, come to us next. So at this time, uh, I want to introduce to some and others already know her. The pleasure she hit the ground running and working hard. So we appreciate that. Uh, Lisa, at this time, I'll introduce Lisa and Jeannie at this time. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Isaac. Oh, there you um, go. As Isaac said, I'm the, the interim director. My name is Lisa Mancini, and I'm the interim director for Behavioral Health and Recovery Services. It's a huge honor for me to be here today. I feel really blessed to be able to participate with all of you. So first of all, huge gratitude for everyone on this call. When I was asked to do this, I took time to reflect. My reflection is a really big part of my life. And I was thinking about wellness and how do we take care of ourselves? And one thing that I know that I do is my faith is really important and it really plays an impact in all that I do from the moment that I, well, not necessarily the moment I open my eyes in the morning, but once I can get up and, and be more awake, um, my faith is really, it starts my day off. And so as I was reflecting on today in the National Day of Prayer and behavioral health and, and mental illness, I was thinking about many of you know that I'm a family member. I have my oldest brother um, suffers, lives with schizophrenia and um, he's currently hospitalized. And the one thing that we've shared throughout my family life is our faith. And as my brother is aging, um, with mental illness, he's starting to also um, have showing signs of dementia. And so when I go and visit him, he has beautiful blue eyes and they, and they sparkle and they open up when he sees me. And oftentimes he knows who I am. He may not remember my name exactly, but he knows who I am. And when I spend time with him, I go to a couple of hymns that he knows and I'll sing them and he will, his eyes will open up and he'll start to sing um, in this beautiful out of tune, but his whole heart and soul are into it. And then usually when I'm able, when my husband and I are able to go up and visit with him, we'll, we'll have time for a meal and I'll always look to him. Ooh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just feeling it right now within me. <laughs> Um, and I'll, you know, we'll talk about eating and he'll look at me and his words are, are becoming fewer and he'll say, pray. And so I will do the, the table prayer that I've done with him as a child and throughout the years and he can recite it and he just gets this this energy within him that you don't see. And so, and I, and I believe, Rabbi Lisa, you talked about connectedness. And the one thing we will do to close our time together is we'll hold hands. And it's just that interaction, that connectedness that we feel um, that is so vital and so important. So I see this play out with my brother and on other days when it's family days at the hospital and we see lots of families get there, you can see how important that staying connected is towards our wellness. So I'm just very honored to be here um, and know that what all of you do every day, day in and out to help people, to help keep people connected is so vital in all that we do. And for those of us who work directly with those who may be living with mental illness, who may be living with some type of substance use disorder, just know that your heart and your soul make a difference in their lives. So I just want to close today encouraging everybody to take time during the day to reflect to take time during the day to think about your own wellness and those who are around you. And if that is by praying, um, which I do every morning to get myself grounded 
in who I want to be in that day, um, please do so. And know that it has an impact in lives that you touch. Thank you for asking me to be here this morning. Thank you, or this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. That was amazing. Uh, good. I see a lot of hearts and thumbs up and everything. Um, I just want to say, you know, it, it's a blessing the fact that, you know, we, we have a, um, you, you know, a, a, a God, a higher power that allows for those moments of clarity. You know, I've in the past previously worked with several um, elderly that had dementia um, progressing towards Alzheimer's and families used to always tell me about they were amazed when they had those moments of clarity. And I'm so um, blessed to hear that you you have those moments with your brother. You know, those are the moments that you can continue to cherish and add on to those other memories that you have. So that's a blessing. And the fact that his eyes open and he's able to tell you, pray, <laughs> you know, sing a song. That's a blessing. That's awesome. I pray you continue to have those moments um, with him. And that reminds us, you know, all to talk about our wellness, you know, We've been through a lot over these last few years, and I uh, pray all that, you know, all of us can, especially as providers, direct providers, and um, overseeing programs that we can all uh, take the time to check in and reflect and know where we are in our own wellness, you know, and that, um, that if we do that, you know, we can take care of ourselves so we continue to take care of others, both in our professional and our personal lives. So thank you for that, Lisa. All right. <laughs> So I'm just looking at the chat, seeing if I had a message. Okay, I saw at this uh, time, we had another person on our uh, uh, agenda that since moved. So we're going to uh, now go on to, um, we have an, the pleasure of thanks to Michelle for um, allowing us to uh, get this next group of individuals, um, sorry, who, um, the chat oh the chat is disabled uh, if y'all can be aware of that we should have that open for people to be able to chat so i'm just getting a message all right so um so uh it uh this next group of individuals uh again we appreciate um them for being able to do this because um as rabbi delson said earlier in the midst of high holy days and i know they have been very busy so we have the pleasure of having um I think we had last year her, but not her husband. So this time we have Cantor Ellen um, and also her husband, Saul, um, who will be representing from Temp uh, Peninsula Temple Beth El. And this was actual a live recording. So it's going to be amazing and awesome. Um, and they're singing the song Peace Train. It's almost here now, time to wait is done. It's almost here now, time to wait is done. Come on the peace train. Now I've been happy lately, thinking about good things to come. And I believe it could be something good has begun. Train sounding louder, glad on the peace train. Ooh, I, I, come on the peace train. Shalom Alechem, Olam Chesed Yibane. So far 
Wow, that was amazing. Just think about that. You know, come on the peace train. How much would things be easier if we had the opportunity or we all took a part to get on the peace train? You know, that, that's one of the words. And then says somebody, uh, something good has begun, right? That's another line right there from the song. What, what good has begun? Um, some people may have asked that question, especially in the midst of everything that's going on. There's a lot that has begun. This day of prayer with all of us coming together is a part of um, something good beginning. And so we, we hope that uh, in the midst of all, in the midst of everything, that as we continue to go on through this National Day of Prayer, with everything that has already been said, that we can all sound a little louder, which is one of the last lines. We can have our voices sound a little louder in the midst of everything that's going on and continue to have understanding and healing and hope for the work that we do, the, the lives that we touch individually and the lives that we can touch collectively. So thank you uh, to Michelle for getting that awesome recording from um, our cantor, Ellen and her husband, Saul. That was amazing. We always appreciate that. And um, Peninsula Temple Bethel, thank you for that. All right, getting, uh, all right um, next up, um, if you it take time also to reflect on those, if you have some comments, you can feel free to put those in the chat. Um, and uh, especially for anything that has been said thus far, um, it is definitely much appreciated and welcome. Uh, next, um, we're going to, uh, we've had the pleasure of uh, having somebody represent from the Hindu Speakers Bureau um, the last couple of years, which has been amazing. Um, to be able, as we indicated earlier, to have um, all different faiths um, and us be able to come together um, for this day. And uh, so today we have the pleasure of having Lakshmi with us here today uh, to represent the Hinders uh, Speakers Bureau. And I think I see her right there. She's there. And uh, Bill, Bill, we thank you for Bill and Michelle for being able to get uh, Watch me here today to be able to come in her own way. Now we're muted. Let's see, I'm on mute. Lakshmi, can you hear us? Yeah, she, she she's muted. Somebody needs to unmute her. Let me see if I can, if that works. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. Hello, All right. hello. hello everyone. Namaste. Um, could someone allow me to start my video as well? I'm not able to uh, start the video either. Oh, yes, we need to have that.
Did. You should be able to start your video now. Okay, thank you. All right, I think it's getting started. I know All it takes right. time to warm up. <laughs> yes, namaste everyone. Happy to be here. Thank you for all the wonderful offerings so far. Um, I'd like to start off with a Hindu song, which basically consists of just four Sanskrit words. It's loka, samasta, sukhino, bhavantu. And this translates to may all beings of this world be happy. And this is how it goes. Loka, samasta, sukhino, bhavantu. Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu. Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu. Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu. May all beings of this world be happy. The Hindu tradition offers many Sanskrit mantras and hymns such as this one. And these invoke inner peace and well-being. In fact, the vibrations of these mantras themselves have the power to transform, inspire, and heal us on every level, mental, physical, psychological, spiritual, and emotional. The meaning of each mantra or chant which glorifies the divine and also seeks spiritual blessings is a beautiful bonus. That meaning is a bonus that we can actually contemplate on. Now I'll share a soothing mantra on Lord Shiva, one of the main deities of the Hindu tradition who blesses us with peace, positivity, and all wellness and all goodness. You can feel free to close your eyes or leave them open to enjoy this mantra. Om Namah Shivaya, Shivaya Namo. Om Namah Shivaya, Shivaya Namo. Om Namah Shivaya. Shivaya Namo Om Namah Shivaya Shivaya Namo Om Namah Shivaya Shivaya Thank you. And Om Shanti. Peace. Thank you, Lakshmi. That was beautiful. Thank you for that, the, for the mantras and for your kind words and expressions. Um, I think that all, you know, kind of gives us <laughs> reground and, and just an outlook. Uh, in terms of you saying the, the translation in English, May all beings of this world be happy. I mean, that's what we would hope for, you know, and I know a lot of the work that you all do um, is, is trying to continue to have that possibility for everybody that we come in contact with, not just necessarily work with everybody that we come in contact with, both in our professional and personal lives. So we thank you for that. And then also, like how you said, it's for our psychological, spiritual, and emotional wellness. And it is beautiful. So we thank you for gracing us with that beautiful mantra. So thank you for that. Um, next, we want to introduce uh, um, to a few who, uh, the, um, I guess this will, yeah, I think this is our first time having Father Gabriel with us, um, if I'm not correct, if I'm not mistaken, as far as the National Day of Prayer. Um, 
Um, we want to thank uh, Gloria in the, uh, the uh, Latino Collaborative Initiative for allowing us to connect us with Father Gabriel. Uh, and so far, we want to introduce to others and everybody today now welcome Father Gabriel um, from Our Lady of Mercy in Daly City. Oh, he might need to be unmuted. So let's make sure he can. Oops, okay. It should be fine now. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody and the team um, who reached out to me uh, to be part of, um, of this day. I'm so very grateful uh, getting to meet all of you and to learn uh, the great work all of you are doing for. Um, a segment of our society, of our communities that uh, uh, very often go unnoticed, um, very unfortunately so. Um, for us in the Catholic Church, the, uh, the Conference of uh, Catholic Bishops in the United States have created an, uh, created an office now for human dignity, which has a desk dedicated to mental health. And um, um, getting in touch with uh, this group now uh, will be a step forward trying to link up, to create linkages where um, we can create more awareness and come together to share ideas and um, kind of just support each other, encourage each, each other to do what we are doing. So I'm going to just offer words of prayer um, after listening to all the beautiful things that we each each of you has said, so I will pray. Um, uh, if you can enable my sharing, I can share my prayer. I'll probably pray in Spanish if I'm. Um, that's uh, okay. So if you enable my sharing, I can put my prayer up so that uh, if my Spanish is not too good, you know what I'm talking about. You should be able to share now, Father. Okay. Thank you. All right. In the name del Padre, del Hijo, y del Espíritu Santo. Amen. Dios Padre y todo poderoso. Nosotros tus hijos venimos a ti en este día de, de la salud mental del comportamiento y su entendimiento, de una variedad de orígenes, profesiones y etapas de nuestros viajes espirituales. Nos reunimos como tus hijos en la fe, no solo para orar, sino también para crear conciencia sobre las luchas y la realidad de la salud mental. Y como individuos y comunidades, poder responder con gran compasión. De hecho, el más ordinario de nosotros puede ayudar a construir una cultura de la vida en las formas más pequeñas a través de la conciencia, de la sensibilidad hacia aquellos que luchan con problemas de salud mental, independiente, independientemente del entorno o las circunstancias y que aprendamos de estas condiciones. Amando a Dios, oramos por la gracia espe específica de la apertura y la valencia para discutir la salud mental, especialmente entre las generaciones más jóvenes, incluso, incluso en un grupo abierto de relativamente extraños compartiendo la fe. Que tales encuentros ayudan a nuestros líderes, formadores de políticas y todos los miembros de nuestras comunidades y familias a ver que más personas de las que nos podemos dar cuenta tienen luchas que a menudo son invisibles. Dios amoroso, Mientras vimos nuestro llamado a respetar el carácter sagrado y la dignidad de cada vida humana, mantengamos en nuestra conciencia y oración 
a todos los que luchan con problemas de salud mental. Respondamos siempre como mensaja, mensajeros del amor de Dios con compasión y sensibilidad, creando una cultura de respeto y atención que sea incre increíblemente afirmativa de la vida y a hacerlo ayudar a salvar una vida. Sobre todo, oramos por aquellos que cuidan, aquellos, cuidan de aquellos con problemas de salud mental, trabajadores de la salud y miembros de la familia. Que tu gracia sostenga su, su paciencia y fortaleza para que no se rindan ni siquiera en las circunstancias más difíciles. Todo esto lo pedimos a través de Cristo nuestro Señor. Amén. En el nombre del Padre, y del Hijo, y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Thank you so much, and um, we hope we hope we'll carry the message uh, to our various um, uh, groups and our various um, uh, communities. And for us um, in the Catholic Church, uh, we're in it. We're in it. Thank you. Thank you, Father Gabriel. Thank you so much for that wonderful prayer. Um, and just knowing that the Catholic Church uh, has an office dedicated to human dignity, which is a blessing. And you start off by saying, talking about communities that have, you know, gone unnoticed or communities that have uh, not been serviced or not been welcomed. Um, and so we uh, definitely acknowledge that. And there is awareness that we can all do more when we come together. Um, and that's a blessing how we can transition from talking about communities that have gone unnoticed and not been serviced. And welcome to our next presenter, um, Rev, uh, Reverend Terry Uggenberg, who represents the uh, Many Journeys and uh, the Metropolitan Community Church. I believe y'all, your church, I believe it's located in San Mateo, the one in San Mateo, if I'm not mistaken, uh, where they're uh, um, on Hillsdale. Is that correct? <laughs> That's correct. Okay. All right. All right. Just thank you for that. So we want to uh, have her uh, come in her way and sorry, I'm getting some messages um, coming, coming her way and, oh. um, and welcome us and greet us in her way. Thank you, Reverend Terry. Hi. Well, I am from Mini Journeys Metropolitan Community Church in San Mateo. And last Sunday, we celebrated the blessing of the animals, and I'm sure uh, some of you may have as well. In the Hebrew Bible, Job 12, verses 7 through 7, it says, But ask the animals, and they will teach you, or the birds of the sky, and they will tell you, or speak to the earth, and it will teach you, or let the fish of the sea inform you. Which of these does not know that the hand of God has done this? In God's hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all humankind. So I wanted to take some time today in an attitude of prayer to praise some of the animals who share our world and reflect on the diversity of what surrounds us and celebrate that they do have things to teach those who pay attention. When I pray, I use the word God, but you can substitute any word you'd like that reflects the creative energy as you might embrace it, whatever your tradition and however you conceptualize that which is greater than ourselves. Now today we give you thanks for the animals and pray we might better see them and fulfill our duties to care for them and the earth we inhabit. We lift up in a specific way today, black swans, albatrosses, blue ducks, ibises, mallards and penguins, vultures and pigeons, Dragonflies, fruit flies, bed bugs, Amazon dolphins, Amazon bisons, bats, bottlenose dolphins, elephants, giraffes, marmots, lions, polecats, lizard and tortoise, gorillas, Japanese macaws, orangutans, monkeys, sheep, spotted hyenas, and the bonbos. The bonobos are tied with the chimpanzees as the closest genetic relatives to we, your human creation. In the beginning, all created was called good and very good. Gracious God, we give you thanks for these and the 1400 other species, all who behave in ways humanity has sometimes been unable to see clearly. Same sex loving, gender fluid, sex changing creatures you made with unique gifts 
that show is beloved, your LGBTQ people. Thank you for science that teaches us to see the creatures of the earth more fully so that we were more, may more fully see one another. Help us to accept our queer siblings as natural as nature itself. Forgive us for proclaiming as disordered the things you have made and called good, for proclaiming a limited kind of sacred care. May your queer children gain reprieve from persecution around the world with over 400 bills pending in the USA alone to criminalize our very existence grant us freedom to be. May we have wisdom as we better care for the earth, our home, and home to the many creatures that reflect your wild creativity and love. Amen. Thanks everyone. And today is Ash actually also National Coming Out Day. So uh, happy National Coming Out Day. Amen. Amen. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you for, if you look into the chat, see Reverend Terry puts information in the chat. Um, so you should be able to copy the chat. I think we have that option. <laughs> if not, this information will get out to you all once the, uh, the prayer is over with. So uh, thank you. You brought a lot of attention uh, to the animals. Uh, and I know uh, some, I know our indigenous, uh, which was yesterday indigenous people day, some of our indigenous uh, brothers and sisters um, and individuals bring a lot of attention to the earth and to animals and how much we forget that they also are a part of our habitat and our communities and stuff. So I thank you for doing that as well as for the marginalized communities as well. So thank you so much for your prayer. Oh, we are doing great on time. I'm amazed. All right. So right next up, right on time. Um, is our very own, our co-chair, Pam. Oh, good, you're already unmuted, look at you. You're already ready to go. <laughs> so uh, uh, some of y'all know this hardworking woman has done so much for our communities and Rev is in the Lived Experience Academy, uh, retired former county employee, awesome um, uh, mother and wife and just just a well-rounded individual who we thank you and I'm gonna allow you to go ahead and grace us now and and take it away pam ward pies at this time thank you isaac i'd like to share a poem that i wrote that is part of my spiritual growth and it's called death and resurrection spiritual resurrection all my life i've been waiting for someone to love me to be honest at the moments I'll share with you, I wasn't loving or really living. I had one goal, death equaled peace. The plan evolved organically, spirits to wash down the pills and interact in a lethal way. Ultimately, the prayed for sleep of death, or so I thought. Some would say delusion and I a spiritual experience an amazing bright tunnel with a spectacular blazing light in the distance. Drawn toward the light beyond the veil in the distance, I wanted to bask in that brilliant light. A man with a fedora hat emerged from the light, blocking my path. I believe him to be my grandfather who transitioned when I was 12. Please, I want to go to the light, I pleaded. He spoke in a gentle yet commanding voice. Your work is not done yet. You must go back. Spiritual resurrection. Immediately thrust back into reality of the dreadful mess of human waste, covering my nightgown and bed to invisibility. Even the doctor said, I don't know why you didn't die. It took months to realize I had been given a miraculous gift and a heart rendering revelation. If it's not your time to transition, you'll live with the physical consequences of your actions, like I do. I thought back to my grandfather's words. You must go back. You still have work to do. When the depression finally passed, I was able to accept the words of my grandfather. K 
continuing my journey, committed to service, spiritually giving up myself to others so God can use me. Most important, learning to love myself. I'll never forget this spiritual experience that brought me to this life altering realization. Ultimately, I know I am a child of God. I am the one I've been waiting for to love me. And I offer myself in service to the community. Ashe. Thank you, Pam, for one, for sharing that. I see a lot of the hearts and everything for sharing you know, not only your poem, but a part of your story, being using this safe, vulnerable space to be able to talk about your depression. Uh, we just got out of last month being recovery happens and suicide prevention. And I'm sure you had the pleasure of sharing your study uh, not too long ago uh, at the meeting and stuff. So to be able to do that in a setting, we thank you and appreciate you so much for that. And you talked about um, the, the light and you know, having our, you know, your grandfather, which is a part of your ancestry, it's a blessing when we have that ability to be able to have those moments and knowing that even in the midst of that situation, you were able to be able to hear that your time is, is not your time and there's still work for you to do. So I pray that you continue to do the work that you've been called to do. Because while it is yet day, you can still work. Because when night comes, you won't be able to work. And I think <laughs> <laughs> that it's not your night time yet. So thank you for sharing yourself with all of us today. Thank you, Pam. Um, up next, uh, we have a great, awesome presentation um, from our Spanish choir that we all, again, think collaboration that we have with Latino Collaborative um, at this time. Um, and it's Group A, I think it's Group O and SDP. Um, that's gonna be our next presenters. Tú en el barrio. 
Wow, that was amazing. I just want to, for reference, it would, if you, if you uh, direct to the chat, it is, the group is from um, Carl Crowert, Nessa Senora del Pilar, they're from Our Lady of the Pilar Church in Half Moon Bay. So we thank the Latino Collaborative for allowing us to get that awesome recording uh, and amazing for that. So oh, we are doing great, 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 great. Um, now, at, at this time, we, we, uh, we had a meeting and um, a few of our committee members, um, especially early in the year, we've all been aware of what's been going on in Ukraine um, in the uh, horrendous um, activities that have been happening over there. Um, and so we've talked about this as a committee and we had a, a committee member that really felt it was a really um, amazing opportunity for us to be able to get a representative um, from Ukraine to be able to pray or share home or whatever that they felt in their heart. Um, and so we actually uh, were fortunate and blessed to actually have one of our committee members that is actually from Ukraine. Um, However, she was not able to uh, be here today. And so um, we, the committee for the National Day of Prayer talked about it and was like, well, you know, well, how about the person uh, who really gave this idea and opportunity and they'll be able to share. And then um, at, um, before we started the event, uh, we got a call, um, and Pam got a call that that person unfortunately um, um, were not, was not able to attend um, due to a, a, a medical emergency. And so um, we then was like, well, what can we do? Well, great thing is we have an awesome <laughs> uh, intern for the Spirituality Initiative that is going to do her best rendition. Uh, so this poem is by our own Tatiana, who some of you are familiar. Um, Kenneth Holly was going to read an honor in place of Tatiana. And so now we have Tatiana's poem was going to be read by Kenneth, which is now going to be read by our very own Lauren, our Spirituality Initiative intern. So Lauren, thank you. Yeah, hi everybody. Um, I'm honored to read this poem for Tatiana. So feel free to close your eyes or keep them open while I read it, but the poem is called Say a Prayer Tonight. Say a prayer tonight. Pray for peace. Let Ukraine breathe again. Yellow against blue, the sunflowers reach their hands towards the sun. The river runs down the hill, birds chirping in the garden. After the warm summer rain, children laughing, playing in the park. Ukraine, a yellow rose in bloom, and then the war came. Say a prayer tonight, pray for the children of Ukraine, the children of Donbass, pray for our pain to stop, for justice to prevail, for this cruel war to end. Say a prayer tonight. Pray for peace and let my friends feel joy again. Thank you, Lauren. And if you all know Tatiana, you can definitely send her warm uh, messages and kind words for an awesome prayer. And that just reminds us all that, you know, that their healing is not just here in our own backyard. There's much healing that needs to take place throughout the world. And um, we've, I've had um, in my um, position as one of the pastors of my church, we've had uh, the ability to be able to minister in some of our uh, jails and hospitals to some of the individuals that have come over here from Ukraine. And so, is an honor to be able to hear their stories and the pain that they've went through, but the hope that they also have, especially for all the ones that we've talked to that share and have a faith and knowing that although it's been painful, they still have hope. And the fact that people can be leave, leave their country in the way that they did and still have hope, it was encouraging to me. And so um, I pray that we all can continue to say a prayer tonight as Tatiana um, encourages us to do so. So thank you, Lauren, for reading that. Um, next, we're going to have a um, representative from the Islamic Network Group, and so we think um, we've had ability to partner with them for some time now as well, and we're always um, it's a blessing when they can grace us. And so, Amina, um, let me see if, make sure you be able to get unmuted. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Uh, good afternoon. Salam alaikum, everybody. 
So today, because of the pandemic and just greater awareness, we have all as a society, I think, really gained a better understanding of the critical role that mental illness plays in our lives, whether it's ourselves, whether it's our family, whether it's our friends. And Muslims, interestingly, historically viewed mental health as part of overall health, and they actually had tools in their hospitals for treating depression, such as musical therapy. Unfortunately, in modern times, though, there has been a stigma around issues of mental illness, including the misconception that mental illness reflects a lack of faith or that a true believer doesn't suffer from mental health issues. And yet when we read the Quran, we find that it reiterates that trials and tribulations are a part of our life. And in fact, all of the prophets went through hardships in their life and were sad about them. Um, for example, the prophet Joseph, uh, Jacob is said to have even lost his sight due to the great sorrow he felt about the loss of his son Joseph. And so seeking inspiration from these stories in the Quran can really provide comfort that even the best people face challenges with their families and their communities. And there's a theme throughout the Quran that, you know, tribulation and test is part of life. Uh, in chapter 2, verse 155, it says, we will surely test you with something of fear and hunger and a loss of wealth and lives and fruits, but give God good tidings to the patient. And so we're told that this is the human condition. And as part of that condition, as, as humans, we are challenged by the hardships that impact us, which can often lead to feelings of despair or hopelessness. Uh, another verse in the Quran says, chapter 70, verse 19, indeed humankind was created anxious. And re reflecting on that, there is a, a reiterated in the Quran is the idea that when, whether one is in a state of ease or hardship, what is really important is how one responds to these tests. Uh, both can be tests, wealth can be a test as poverty can. And responding with patience for the hardships and gratitude for the the good times, and that will really determine how much contentment you feel as a human being. Uh, the Quran also gives us tools to help ease the effects of these tribulations, and those are patience and prayer. In chapter 2, verse 153, O you who believe, seek help through patience and prayer. Indeed, God is with the patient ones. Um, and so the idea of patience is you're not just bearing it, but, you're, but you are reflecting on it, and it's helping you to become a stronger person. The Quran also says in chapter 13, verse 28, by the remembrance of God, their hearts are assured. And this has an important role for Muslims. Remembrance of God is referred to as dhikrullah. And it's a way to get closer to God, but also a way to find uh, comfort in times of stress. And this verse also reminds us that remembering God is a solace because it reminds us that God is in control of everything. And that as humans, we can't control everything, which is a good way to manage stress and anxiety, because a lot of times our anxiety or depression comes from sorrow over what happened in the past or worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. And yet realizing that both of these are outside our control kind of frees us from that. And another um, powerful tool in Islamic tradition is what is called dua or supplication. And these can often be used to overcome grief or depression or anxiety. And there's specifically a supplication around um, grief and distress. And the Prophet Muhammad said, whoever is afflicted with grief and distress should recite the following, O oh God, I seek refuge from you, from worry and grief, from incapacity and laziness, from cowardice and miserliness, from being indebted and from being empowered by others. And so this is um, really a, a useful tool for someone who's going through difficulty. And then lastly, there's a powerful reminder in the Quran that tells us that all of our lives have ups and downs and that our tribulations hopefully have an end in sight. Um, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. A verse in the Quran actually repeats twice in chapter 94, six, indeed after hardship or with hardship will be ease, indeed with hardship will be ease. So may God grant ease to all of those suffering from whatever ails us as individuals and as a society and as the world. And Thank you so much for that. Um, that was a reminder. And just reflecting on what you said, and you know, we're bringing back to our awareness that the pandemic and society and mental illness and everything that has occurred, um, and that often, and, and to the fault sometimes of many, that people have believed that because there was, like you indicated, there was a person's lack of faith is what uh, caused them to suffer from something. And that is far from um, the case. And so 
we want to bring awareness to that and thank you for bringing awareness to that and then being that good tidings and um and to be patient and feel and, and there's feeling of despair and, and everything else that those, those are all things that have right have all kind of occurred and those are things that occur not just daily but sometimes frequently often throughout the day multiple times to our individuals that are that live with mental illness and so i thank you for bringing awareness to that and a reminder to us all as well um so um so thank you so much you know for the, for your words and your expressions thank you um our next person was going to be um wesley but i believe he may have lost his connection um and so um, I'm going to then uh, turn over to our very own um, Bill, Reverend um, Cruzy, for to be able to do his part. Okay, Arthur, can you put up the, um, what happened is, is that Wes Bukayama, who is a Buddhist chaplain at the jail in Santa Clara County, um, was to be with us, but he just texted me and called me and said he lost his connection and cannot get reconnected. So um, I will do, I will read what he, uh, Arthur, but you need to put that up for me if you could. It's up. Is it up? Okay, yep. how, come I'm, how come I'm not getting that? Okay, I'll have to find it. Um, just a second here. For some reason, it's not coming up on my screen. Are you sharing the screen? Well, if you can see it, why don't you read it? Because I'm not seeing it. I don't think anything's up yet um, on our screens. Yeah, Arthur, can you put the um, yes? Yeah, so the, the Buddhist. If, if, if Isaac or somebody can pin it, then everybody will be able to see it. I don't have code. I I I, I pinned it. Uh, so and it's in. I have it in speaker uh, mood. So both Bill is pinned as well as the National Day of Prayer is pinned. Don't, I don't see it. So if you see it, why don't you read it? This is a Buddhist um, chant that he was going to do and ask us all to join in, actually. So I still don't see it. So um, I can't, I don't know if I can make it bigger on mine. <laughs> let me remove your pen. Hold on, let me see. Maybe that might help. Remove your pen. Is that better? I can't see anything. So go ahead. Um, All right, I can see a little bit of it because it's a little blurry, but uh, it says loving kindness meditation. Uh, may all beings be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May I be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to me. May I have May I live in, in peace and harmony. May my family be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my teachers be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my friends be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May strangers be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my enemies be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. Uh, if you can scroll down then. May all be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May all they may all live in peace and harmony. I believe that's the end of it. Thank you, Isaac. No problem. Thank you. And so, yes, Wesley has been somebody who has been um, with us, um, helping us uh, throughout. He's come to he used to come to a lot of our meetings. Um, I know he's been in the Santa Clara jail as a um, lay Buddhist chaplain. I believe he's also done some work in San Mateo County jails as well. 
Um, he is a licensed clinical social worker. So we thank him. Um, although there is always, this is the world that we're in with the Zoom and Teams and everything. There's always some tech user difficulties right at the beginning of the end. So we thank him for uh, gracing us with this uh, love and kindness uh, meditation. So thank you, Bill, and, um, and make sure we thank Wesley for that. All right, let me go back to a different view. Speaker view. All right. Um, oh, wow, we're already towards the end. I can't believe it. Um, well, uh, we are right around at, um, at the end. Please, um, I know we've had some difficulties with the muting and stuff. So if you did not, just want to make sure if you are not able to um, uh, copy and paste the chat, I know some said they were, some said they were, um, haven't been able to. Um, we will make sure that all information, if there's any flyers or links, that you all will have access to that when we send out um, a thank you email for everybody who registered. Um, so that's one of the housekeepings. And we want to thank everybody um, that was able to come, all those that were um, that register and was not able to make it last minute, everybody who came and only can stay for a little bit. We, um, the Spirituality Initiative appreciates all of you all. And again, um, I didn't reference it early, but the spirit, this event uh, was sponsored by the Spirituality Initiative, the Latino Collaborative Initiative, Office of Diversity and Equity, um, and also Behavioral Health and Recovery Services uh, for San Mateo County. And all of you all as well. So we wanna appreciate all of you and thank you all for being here. Next up, we're gonna have um, our benediction by um, a woman who definitely needs no introduction, who has continues to do the work on the ground in the community, um, has done so uh, for many years, and it's just a jewel uh, to uh, to the body, and and uh, you know really appreciate her and all that she's done. Uh, Reverend Mary Fraser, she's going to do our our benediction. God bless you. And I just uh, want to say that uh, thank you for being such a wonderful host and everyone that had a part in this program. God bless you. So if you would bow your heads with me wherever you are, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Father, I ask that you would give us safe passage to our respective destinations and responsibilities. And when we arrive, wherever we're going, that we would find everything well. In the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend Fraser, for that, um, that benediction and blessing for us all. So with that, I want to draw, draw your attention. Uh, you should be able to see in the chat, there should be uh, our evaluation, should be added in there. Uh, and please feel free to take some time to uh, complete that. And if you can, and uh, I think we have some, some closing out music.
Separate. 